Okay, good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Unfortunately, I have to leave right after this so I can go and collect some projects that are due for my students in class. So it's uh, not an insult to Gilbert when I leave right after. But if you have suggestions or comments, please feel free to email me or come catch me up on the fourth floor. So I'm Michaela Morrow. I'm in the accounting group. This is joint work with Shane Stinson at the University of Alabama. It's in the early stages and we uh, titled it a carrot or a stick experimental evidence on the relative effectiveness of health insurance tax incentives okay so most of my research looks at the effects of tax incentives on taxpayer decisions this one is no different um, do you need me to stand a certain place for the camera I feel okay I feel I feel trapped back here sorry um, the uh, motivation here, though, is the Affordable Care Act of 2010, also known as Obamacare. I'm assuming that all of you know about it since it shut down our government for three weeks and um, also shut down the city yesterday when Obama was here to talk about it. It established an individual insurance mandate for all Americans. This is designed to be facilitated by the individual states through health care exchanges. At this point, what we know is that the encouragement to purchase insurance, there's a couple of things. The first thing is a penalty if you don't purchase health insurance. This will be assessed on your tax return, uh, your 2014 tax return, when you file it in 2015. I believe it starts at $900 for single, but that's designed to go up over the years and eventually increase to, I think, $5,000. The reward for participating in the healthcare system is a credit that will be issued to your insurance company that's designed to lower premiums. So we'll see if that actually works out or how that ends up um, um, coming through. So what we really want to look at is in this environment, it, do we have the best tax incentive format? And the, the reason why this is so important is we're looking at not the normal group of people that want to be involved in the health insurance system. So kind of two things ha happened here. We had this mandate, but then on the other side of Obamacare, we had um, a requirement now that insur insurers cover everyone, regardless of pre-existing conditions, and now there's no longer a lifetime maximum for benefits. And so we're going to have a whole lot of people flocking to the system that are going to be pulling out more than they're putting in. To balance that out, we need some people that are in the system that are putting in more than they're taking out, and that would be young, healthy Americans. And so what we're looking at then is how are we going to encourage those guys to participate in the healthcare system? So if you're interested in any of this literature, let me know. I don't have titles or names of authors up there. We don't have time for that. But when we're thinking about how we come up with this best tax incentive, uh, we can draw on research from the area of framing and framing tax incentives. Prospect theory tells us that a tax refund is uh, viewed as a gain, while a tax due is viewed as a loss. Viewed as a loss, where tax compliance is concerned, we see compliance go down when a, a taxpayer is in a tax due position. And then rule uncertainty has a big effect as well. And so we see reduced compliance when people are uncertain of the rules and how they'll be enforced. Obviously something to be worried about with new legislation and um, not really sure how various things are going to be enforced and how much um, additional compliance is going to be needed for taxpayers. We also are taking into account uh, the method of optimal taxation. And economics literature calls this direct versus indirect taxes. The, the best way to think about this and the way we operationalize this in our experiment is a direct tax is a deduction, an indirect tax is a credit. So a deduction reduces taxable income, a credit reduces taxes. And so literature in this area has found that that makes a difference in how people respond to incentives. Finally, we have to take into account risk preferences. Anytime we talk about healthcare, obviously there's some risk preference um, uh, issues that can, can happen there. Literature on risk and framing has found that individuals will consider those things separately. We also know that extreme risk seekers, maybe those people that generally wish to stay uninsured, they don't necessarily care what the frame of this is. So they wouldn't care if it was a reward versus a penalty, for example, for participation or non-participation. 
And then there's been some research done on responses to framed medical information and um, they found that this is affected by the level of health risk. So we may have differing responses based on what uh, people feel their risk is. So very quickly, there's no way you can describe an experiment um, well in an eight minute presentation, but we're currently collecting pilot data. We have our, our stick scenario and our carrot scenario. So the stick would be a penalty for non-participation, whereas a carrot would be a reward for participation. And so participants are put into one of those four categories and they could either have a tax penalty for non-participation or a reduced deduction. Um, in the carrot scenario, you're rewarded for your participation with an increased credit or an increased deduction. We're using students because for once, as experimentalists, this is our target population. These are the people that we wanna know how they're going to respond. These are the young, healthy individuals that we wanna encourage to participate. And I think that one of the things that has been left out of consideration in this policy is we're not trying to see what older Americans or unhealthy people will do. They're going to go towards uh, being insured. Whereas younger people, if I take a poll in my class, they say, I'm never gonna get sick. Why do I need health insurance? Um, and so we wanna see how we can best induce them to participate. Do we need to beat them up with a stick or do we need to feed them with a carrot? <laughs> and so uh, really what, what we're hoping to get out of this is a couple of things. We wanna figure out if the frame and the structure of these incentives will differentially motivate participation. We hope the answer to that is yes, of course. And then the policy implication would be, hopefully we can identify those conditions that are most palatable to the target demographic. How do we get these young, healthy individuals to participate? Is it more of a reward? Is it more of a penalty? We're already seeing things out there in the popular press where young people are saying, this is too expensive. Why am I going to participate? If I get sick, I get sick. I'll just pay for it then. Also, unintended consequences. We know that in Massachusetts, the healthcare uh, reform here is generally thought to have worked. However, we still have a lot of young people that aren't participating in the system. And so we wanna think about what are some flaws that are, could be exploited um, by, by people that are trying to participate maybe just for a little bit. I know I'm gonna have a surgery, I'm gonna sign up for health insurance, then I'm gonna drop it as soon as the surgery is done. That's the opposite effect of what we want, which is pulling more out um, than, than they're putting in. And do we have a mismatch between those administering this policy and the people that they're trying to reach? And so uh, do we need to do a little more as far as advertising or convincing um, people that this is a good idea? You're gonna be so proud of me. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.